Good morning. The first lesson is from the second chapter of Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. We will now read Psalm 23 responsively by verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardians of your souls. Here ends the lessons. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. They will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. <clears throat> All who came before me are thieves and bandits, 
but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that you may have life abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You'd like may be seated and I'd like the children to join us for a few moments and we're going to sit over here. to find my page here, guys, so hang loose with me for a moment. Good morning. I brought some friends for you to meet. This little guy's my buddy. Yeah. Do you want to tell them who you are? Yeah. My name is Benji. What's your name? Paul. Paul? What's your name? Mackenzie. Brady. Brady. Tyler. Okay. Nina. Nina. What's your name, little guy back there? You have a name? No name? That's sad. <laughs> oh, okay. My name is Benji. I'm glad to meet you. I brought another friend of mine. We have been friends forever and ever. She is my bestest friend in all the world. We pray together. We play together. We run out in the pasture together. We do all kinds of things. She is my best friend. You want to meet her? Her name is Lammy. Do you want to introduce her, Benji? No. Let's do it the way we do it at our church. Okay, the way we do it at our church is we have the children call. Her name is Lammy, so on three we're going to call Lammy. One, two, three. Lammy. Lammy. Oh, that's not very good. She can't hear you in the barn. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Lammy. Still no Lammy. Well, sometimes we have all the people call, so let's try that. All right, everybody on three. One, two, three. Lammy! Again, Lammy! Benji, what's wrong? Why doesn't she come and join us? Do you know? No. I don't know. Lammy, are you up there, Lammy? Lammy, why don't you come and join us? We want you to meet these people. Lammy, where are you? Benji, is that you? Who did you think it was? Well, I wasn't sure. Well, I didn't know who or what those other voices were. I didn't know them, and I was frightened. I remember when that fox came after me, and you came and chased it away. I didn't want to come up. It was the fox trying to trick me. I didn't want to come up until I heard your voice, and I knew I'd be safe. Lammy was afraid because she didn't, write, she didn't know you. Have you met her before? No, you haven't. Have you met her before? No, you are all strangers to her. And she was, she was afraid because she didn't know you. She knows me. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She knows Benji, and she knows she'd be safe with Benji. And that's what was going on in the gospel that you heard me read a few moments ago. The sheep were afraid of, of the bad people that would do, their, do them harm. But um, Benji, what do you do for Lammy? Well, I bring her hay to eat. Yuck. You like to eat hay? I don't think so, no. I get water for her. Her paws are too little to open the faucet. I play with her. And I protect her like when the fox was trying to get her. Thanks, Benji. You're welcome, because you know me and I know you. Yes, sir. That's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus knows us, and Jesus is with us, and Jesus gives us all the things we need, and Jesus protects us. Jesus is like a good shepherd. You know what a shepherd is? What's a shepherd? Somebody who takes care of the sheep. You got it. And Jesus takes care of us. Let's pray. Everybody, let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For being my shepherd. For being my shepherd. Help me to always hear. Help me to always hear. Your voice. Your voice. Amen. Amen. You can go to Children's Church. I'm glad you all came up. Benji and Lammy were anxious to meet y'all. Benji and Lammy and Carolyn and I have been friends for 10 years and they help, they help us do the children's time each week. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. The sheep know the good shepherd. The sheep know the good shepherd means them no harm. The sheep know his voice. The shepherd knows his sheep's name. The shepherd feeds them. The shepherd gives them water. The shepherd comes to give them birth when they're lambing to help. And they're not afraid of the shepherd because they know him and they know that he's always been faithful and so they trust him when he calls to them. And they come because the shepherd means life to them. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. We are the sheep. And just as the good shepherd sacrifices the warmth of his bed on cold nights to check on the ewes when they're lambing, just as the good shepherd risks his life to protect the sheep from, from wolves and wild dogs and thieves, so too our Lord has sacrificed for us. That's what the cross is all about. That's why you see Jesus, the Good Shepherd, standing in front of the cross. St. Paul says the same thing to us in his letter to the Ephesians. 
Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Martin Luther said the same thing in his small catechism. And I encourage you to get a copy of that and read it. It's great devotional reading. When he explains the third article, I'm sorry, the second article of the creed, Luther says, what does this mean? It means at great cost, Jesus has saved me and redeemed me, a lost and condemned sinner. He has freed me from sin, death, and power of the devil, not with silver and gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering in death and death. Like the good shepherd, our Lord calls us and leads us to the abundant life if we're listening, if we're listening to the good shepherd. The reading from 1 Peter reminds us that listening to and following the good shepherd isn't always easy. And, 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 and sometimes it causes suffering but it leads us eventually to the abundant life. Um, in the second lesson, for it, is, for it is to your credit, if being aware of God, you endure pain and suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is there in that? In other words, you deserve it. But if you endure, when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes even painful, to listen to and follow the Good Shepherd, but it leads to an abundant, peaceful, satisfying life. The Good Shepherd calls us. Do you hear the Shepherd calling you? The thief also calls. Do you hear the thief calling you? Jesus tells us that the thief comes to kill and destroy, to steal. But the Good Shepherd calls to bring life. You hear both voices during the day. I have that cartoon image of two angels sitting on your, or an angel and a devil sitting on your shoulder. To whom do you listen? Let me tell you about my brother-in-law, Peter. A number of years ago, his wife, Kelly, lay dying in the hospital in Florida. And knowing that the end was very near, Peter called Kelly's mother in Massachusetts and suggested that if she wanted to see her daughter, Kelly, before she died, Joan had best get there as soon as possible. So she grabbed the first flight she could get from her home in Boston to where her daughter lays in her bed dying the last moments of life. And incidentally, at the same time, Joan's 95-year-old mother was dying. Now, there's an extreme example of the sandwich generation. Hmm. As you can imagine, Joan was understandably distraught, overwrought, overcome with grief and worry for her daughter and her mother, and all those feelings took the form of anger. She was angry. She was very angry. And Peter, my brother-in-law, became the object of her tirades and her fits of anger. And like Peter, the author of our second reading today, not Peter, brother-in-law Peter, Peter suggests 
that brother-in-law Peter was suffering for doing the right thing. He bore it calmly and quietly. Not before calling Carolyn and me and asking, what should I do? How do I deal with this woman? My advice was to have nothing to do with her. Nothing to do with this hateful, vindictive, spiteful woman. When you see her coming, go the other way. If she's at the hospital when you go there, ask her to leave, or, or you leave. You do not need all the grief and heartache she's causing you at the death of your wife. You don't need the turmoil she's causing as you try to care for, for the mother of their two preteen boys. I'm afraid I called Joan a witch. Well, more likely a word that rhymes with witch. Don't take her crap. Stay away from her, and soon she'll realize that if she ever wants to see her only two grandchildren again, she's going to have to come back crawling to you for all of her ugliness. That was my counsel to him. Thanks be to God. Peter heard another voice calling at the same time. And as a result of Aunt Arlette's call from Michigan, and the Good Shepherd sometimes uses the telephone, so pay attention. As a result of her call, Peter heard the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd called him not to fight with Joan, not to ignore her, try to understand the pain of both her mother and her daughter being at death's door. Aunt Arlette said, Peter, Joan needs a place to put all her anger and fear, her despondency. She needs a place to put it. It's okay, Peter, to let her put it on you. Peter endured. He even invited Joan to dinner with him and the boys, again, her only two grandchildren. And at the hospital one day, he said he saddled up next to her and he whispered into her ear, Joan, I really do love you. But don't tell anyone. I wouldn't want it to ruin my reputation. That's Peter. I really do love you. She listened. She embraced Peter. She began to cry. Peter heard the voice of the thief. Peter also heard the voice of the good shepherd and Arlette. He listened, and he followed the voice of the good shepherd, even though it meant he had to endure Joan's grief as well as, as, well of, as, well as his own. I wish I could say lived happily ever after. No, they still have kind of a prickly relationship. But Peter has peace, knowing that, that he endured. And incidentally, for almost 20 years, Peter has seen to it that his sons visit their grandmother at least once a year. One of them lives in Utah, one of them lives in Florida, but Peter insisted that they see their grandmother. And I don't know this for sure, but I suspect that early on, Peter financed those trips so that Joan could see her two grandchildren. You hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd calls you to the good, the abundant life. We also hear the voice of the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. To whom will you listen? I leave you with the words of Jesus. The 
thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. To whom do you listen? Amen.